Welcome back or welcome to the Train Right Podcast. I'm Coach Adam Pulford, your host for the Cycling and Triathlon Shows. For those who have been tuning in on a regular basis, fellow coach and co-host Hillary Allen runs the Ultra Running Show. Be sure to check out her episodes as well, as we both weave in and out of all things human performance with the end goal of helping each of our listeners to improve their performance, swim, bike, and or run. <laughs> Uh, the past three episodes that I've put out have been a series of basic training concepts. Today, I want to wrap up the series with a summary of those ideas from the episodes and give you real world applicable workouts and information that you can apply to your own training. So why a summary? Because even though I call them basic concepts, they are basic from a fundamental standpoint, not basic as in oversimplistic. In fact, some of this can be quite complex, confusing, and hard to put in action. But it's my job as a coach and as an educator to make it simpler and easier to understand. I then want you to be able to put those concepts into action for your own training purposes. So before we start summarizing the training concepts from the past episodes, I'll remind you that we first need a grounding of where we get our training zones and the intensities from and how we establish them. So we use a term called field testing, and this can be swim, bike, or run. For the purpose of this episode, I'll focus simply on, on cycling. And for field testing, what we're really talking about is it's crucial for establishing baselines in training and in physiology. We set training zones and you have a better idea of knowing where your limits are or what I call your edges. It's time to go find that edge. And for most cyclists, I like to use a 20 minute time trial, especially if I'm teaching to a bigger audience like this for, for our listeners to wrap their heads around, to make it kind of standardized. I'll link the, I'll, 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 I'll get information for the 20 minute time trial that I use. And I'll link it to our show notes of how to do this and how to use, uh, or how to use a calculator to create training zones from there. For my own athletes, I have a week of testing ranging from anywhere between max effort sprints to all out VO2 efforts. And then I use a 20 or a 30 minute time trial, depending on the athlete phenotype, the history of their training, how well they're doing. And sometimes I'll even extend that out to a 60 minute time trial. All of that is what I call the individualized approach to coaching and training. And I've actually got a future episode lined up for that. So for now, let's try to keep it simpler and go with what everyone I think will benefit from. And that's, uh, again, keeping it simple to that 20 minute time trial. And again, for more information on how to do the field test and create zones, if you don't have them already established, I'll link that in the show notes. Be sure to um, go to our landing page at trainright.com and uh, go to Trainright Podcast and you'll find it in there. So the title of this episode is called The Three Workouts Everyone Needs. So let's get right down to it. Okay, so what are the three workouts? I'll start at a high level. And then I'll go more in detail after that. The first workout is endurance miles. It's an aerobic ride. It's one to two hours and maybe up to five or six hours. I'll get more, more detailed here in just a minute. The second workout is a threshold workout where we're aiming for 30 to 40 minutes of total time and zone at threshold. We'll explain what that means. And that's per session. The third workout is a VO2 max workout where you're aiming for 15 to 20 minutes of total time and zone per session. And that's going to be the hardest workout. Now let's just come back and go a little deeper into what each of those means. Back to endurance miles. This is an aerobic ride and this is your foundation. This is where the majority of riding will be 
Okay. It's important to know that that endurance miles ride, it will be in your base phase all the way through your specialization phase or your peaking phase. It is a core part of everything that you do. When you're using CTS or training peaks terminology, it's commonly referred to as zone two. Okay. Now, if you've listened to the past episodes with Tim Cusick and Dr. Seiler, where we talk about a three zone system, this, this intensity that we're talking about is actually the upper end of zone one. And you'll go back and when you listen to it, you'll understand how and why we sometimes refer to a three zone system. In particular, it's to, when you're looking at broad bases of athletes or bigger groups, it's, it's easier to see, uh, uh, things happening. Okay. Um, there's more to it than that, but that's high level. Endurance miles is an aerobic development workout, and it sets the stage for higher level training and durability. It's the bread and butter. Okay. And, um, you also want to make sure that as you're developing yourself and incorporating endurance miles in that after you get the aerobic base built, you're progressing with one long ride per month to go deeper aerobically. A good rule of thumb is, is going uh, deeper by expanding or going longer by 10 to 20% each month. So an example of that is, you know, say we're into April, um, and your longest ride has been around three hours the next month, extend up to three and a half hours. So you're just, you're progressively overloading even your long ride per month. And as I said before, is you want to get proficient at one to two hours of this aerobic endurance miles riding and build up to probably five or six hours for a one day ride. I know that sounds like a lot and I'm not telling you to do that every week. What I'm saying is you want to progress up to that and everyone's, everyone's going to be a little different and capped out on what their long ride can be. But it's important to know that in general, you, do, you want to progress that long ride with volume for reasons that Dr. Seiler uh, talks about extensively on uh, his episode talking more about athlete durability. Now let's talk about thresh, the threshold workout. As I said, we're aiming for 30 to 40 minutes of total time in zone per session. What is this intensity? This intensity is what we call zone four or threshold training. Threshold meaning functional threshold power, FTP, commonly called in in the literature. Okay. And when we're referring to a three zone system, that's the zone two that we're talking about. Your goal here is to either extend the time that you can ride at or just below FTP or it's to increase your FTP by doing shorter intervals that are above threshold. Generally speaking, we're looking at eight, 10, 12, 15, or 20 minute intervals. And an example of an intensive FTP workout would be four by eight minutes at or slightly above functional threshold power with about four or five minute recovery in between. That's a good starting point for anybody who wants to increase their functional threshold power to start in on for a ride itself. And you do all of that with a total ride time of around 75 to 90 minutes in total. In Tim's episode, we talk at length about how to do this, especially with sub LT training or pyramidal up in, in up to threshold training approaches. Now you can scale this up to 40 to 60 minutes of time in zone per workout. And what that might look like is four by 15 or three by 20. If you're looking at the very upper end of that, that threshold workout, but that's, that's a burly workout. You need to progress up to that. Okay. And you can start with two by 20 and then you can slowly, you know, you can add another one. You can go two by 20 and then even go a 10 minute interval after that. The whole idea there is you're accumulating time in zone and you want to make sure that it's in that zone four or that threshold power zone. Now, if people are being intimidated by, wow, 60 minutes of work in the threshold, first of all, you can do it with uh, well-established training zones that are accurate for you. This is human physiology. However, if you're new to training, scale down, go to, go to 15 or 20 minutes and a good way to do that three by eight three by eight at threshold. That's going to help 
move the needle and, and get you training very well into that threshold zone. And even if it is two by 10 to start things off, progressively build up through. Next, the VO2 workout. Some of my favorite and also not some of my favorite. They're very, very hard to do, but the reason why I love them and the reason why I love giving them to athletes is because you really get a lot of performance out of this. So with the VO2 max workout, we're aiming for 50. Welcome back or welcome to the Train Right Podcast. I'm Coach Adam Pulford, your host for the cycling and triathlon shows. For those who have been tuning in on a regular basis, fellow coach and co-host Hillary Allen runs the Ultra Running Show. Be sure to check out her episodes as well, as we both weave in and out of all things human performance with the end goal of helping each of our listeners to improve their performance, swim, bike, and or run. <laughs> Uh, the past three episodes that I've put out have been a series of basic training concepts. Today, I want to wrap up the series with a summary of those ideas from the episodes and give you real world applicable workouts and information that you can apply to your own training. So why a summary? Because even though I call them basic concepts, they are basic from a fundamental standpoint, not basic as in oversimplistic. In fact, some of this can be quite complex, confusing, and hard to put in action. But it's my job as a coach and as an educator to make it simpler and easier to understand. I then want you to be able to put those concepts into action for your own training purposes. So before we start summarizing the training concepts from the past episodes, I'll remind you that we first need a grounding of where we get our training zones and the intensities from and how we establish them. So we use a term called field testing, and this can be swim, bike, or run. For the purpose of this episode, I'll focus simply on, on cycling. And for field testing, what we're really talking about is it's crucial for establishing baselines in training and in physiology. We set training zones and you have a better idea of knowing where your limits are or what I call your edges. It's time to go find that edge. And for most cyclists, I like to use a 20 minute time trial, especially if I'm teaching to a bigger audience like this for, for our listeners to wrap their heads around, to make it kind of standardized. I'll link the, I'll, 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 I'll get information for the 20 minute time trial that I use. And I'll link it to our show notes of how to do this and how to use, uh, or how to use a calculator to create training zones from there. For my own athletes, I have a week of testing ranging from anywhere between max effort sprints to all out VO2 efforts. And then I use a 20 or a 30 minute time trial, depending on the athlete phenotype, the history of their training, how well they're doing. And sometimes I'll even extend that out to a 60 minute time trial. All of that is what I call the individualized approach to coaching and training. And I've actually got a future episode lined up for that. So for now, let's try to keep it simpler and go with what everyone I think will benefit from. And that's, uh, again, keeping it simple to that 20 minute time trial. And again, for more information on how to do the field test and create zones, if you don't have them already established, I'll link that in the show notes. Be sure to um, go to our landing page at trainright.com and uh, go to Trainright Podcast and you'll find it in there. So the title of this episode is called The Three Workouts Everyone Needs. So let's get right down to it. To rest ratios, if not a little bit longer. What I tell my athletes is, if you need an extra minute or two to gather yourself and recover in order to hit that power, that prescribed VO2 power on the next interval, do it because I know I'll get a better result out of them. I'll get a better result from the VO2 uh, block of training. Now you can scale this up. If you've, if you've been training for years and you've even done some of these workouts, you can scale up to 20, 25 minutes, even up to 30. If you think you can handle it, I do have some athletes that, that can do that quite well. Um, after that, the, the power starts to decay and you probably won't get too much out of it. You can also scale this down. If you haven't, if you're new to training, you haven't done much in the way of VO2 work, start with 10, work yourself up to 15 minutes per session. And again, 
aim, but you want to start with th about three minute of interval duration. So that could look like three by three, better yet, four by three. Okay, to start to get up into 10 minutes plus, 15 minute plus is really the goal. But start with where you're at and progress up from there. Now, generally, if you're working the, the right zone, as I said before, you want to go a little bit longer to get the proper response out of this. And they're also, they're really hard. Um, as you listen to, uh, Dr. Seiler's, uh, episode, you'll, you'll understand how hard that is scale of one to 10. It's a nine going on 10. In other words, now next up is, you know, so those, those are the three workouts that I just described. And I know it's a little bit of clickbait because you say three workouts that all you, all you need are these three workouts in the workouts that I told you have a total time and zone. And then I gave you some examples of, of how to work that. So let me clarify on how these are the three workouts that you'll incorporate into your training and into your annual plan. And really, you don't really need to deviate much more than this. Okay. So in Tim's episode, we talk about periodization or organizing your training. And even if, you know, you keep it very simple and very traditional by mapping out, say, the first six to eight weeks of training as primarily aerobic in nature. And first to six to eight weeks, that's from, from a calendar standpoint, meaning January, February, a little bit into March. That's what I'm talking about, about the first six to eight weeks in a cycle. Primarily aerobic, you're doing a lot of endurance miles and you're progressing a long ride. From there, if you want to take a three-week training block, block approach with one week easy, here's how it could look. You start with extensive threshold training for three weeks. You then take a recovery period. You then move into another three to four weeks of intensive threshold training, and you take a little recovery period. You then go into an extensive VO2 max training block. You take a little recovery period. Then you cycle through an intensive VO2 max phase for three, four weeks. If you cycle like that and stay the course with proper training zones in the workouts that I just gave you, I don't think you can go wrong. Keep in mind, you don't want to forget to progress that long ride every month or so, like I talked about in terms of that, um, those long endurance rides, but this will take you about 24 to 26 weeks to do, and that should bring you to the, uh, to about July. Okay. Where you can then check in, you can freshen up and you can do field testing again to see how much progress you've actually made. Most of us, you know, if you're into uh, races and events and that kind of thing, you're, you're doing that by, by that time period, but don't forget to field test to check and see if you made progress from there. You can simply repeat the cycle. Okay. Progressively overloading yourself with going a little bit longer or a little bit harder based on the train, the new training zones, hopefully that have been reestablished and maybe adding in an extra interval here and there. If you cycle through that twice in a year, all of a sudden we're in the holidays, you eat some cookies, you shut things down for a week or two, and then you do it all over again. Now, the one thing that I would change in there would be to perhaps instead of one of the threshold workouts that I talked about, I'd still keep in threshold intervals. Keep that in mind. But if if you do races or mass start events as part of your goals in goal races, you want to be doing some group rides. Okay. Now, the, the, how to incorporate this in is do one group ride a week and, and substitute that for uh, a threshold session, for example. And you do this in place of the threshold because this is unstructured and you kind of have a mix of intensive and extensive threshold work going on. Meanwhile, you know, it could be long, you know, a long ride too, and it could sometimes count for that long progressive ride. But my main point here is if, if your if some of your goals incorporate racing or, um, have the specificity of a mass start, you need to be doing group rides and, you can still get that work done or that energy system work done, um, by swapping those two out. Generally speaking, I don't encourage people to swap out their VO two 
workout for a group ride, for example, um, I'd rather keep that separately because I get more, uh, I get a higher benefit from the VO2 work um, in that regard. Okay, so. Next, if you if you didn't listen to my episode with Tim, definitely do it. Okay, <laughs> get through this episode, but then go back and listen to that one because I do think it's it's one of the better episodes that shores up uh, how to do some of this in detail. But in there, we talk about establishing a proper rhythm to your training. By rhythm, I I mean a pattern in the week. I like the you. I like the phrase rhythm, and I think it's it. I think it's actually Tim's, um, Tim's word, but it speaks more to the impulses going into the body. We make we make a, a fun music analogy um, with that in, in, in the training itself, but um, I think rhythm really speaks to how the impulses are going into the body from a, a training, resting, training, resting, and adaptation sort of way. Simply speaking, for that rhythm, we're talking about a Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday deeper training days. The rest of the days are either aerobic or recovery or rest. We also talk about progressive overload. Specifically in that episode with Dr. Seiler, we're talking about overload over time. And when I just went through that 24-week example just before this, if you go through that and then repeat it, you'll go to new heights. If you're training properly, you'll have higher power. You'll, you'll do longer rides. You'll hold up better throughout. And you always want to be aiming to make a change in that regard, pushing yourself on those deeper training days. And as Dr. Seiler said, though, this takes time. It's not just a one week you train and then all of a sudden you're super better the next week. No, no, no. It takes multiple weeks. And when you approach it like that, and when you approach it, not only like a half a year at a time, but years at a time, and perhaps four year blocks at a time, you then have the bigger picture mentality needed to know where you need to go. Be patient with your training because it takes time. It really does. And assuming that you're doing deliberate training, like I'm talking about here, setting proper training zones, not lying to yourself not giving yourself a, a FTP vanity number or something like that and doing the field test, doing the, the zones and doing the proper work, you'll get the results. And finally, this concept of becoming durable or building durability in athletes. It's, it's, it's all over Dr. Seiler's uh, episode that he and I did. And durability is what every athlete wants. It's what every coach wants for their athlete come race day or challenge day or Saturday <laughs> on the group ride, you want to be able to go the distance, have the legs for the sprint or the hill climb. You want to perform late in the game when it matters. And you want to be able to do it every time. You want to be able to do it today, the next day, the next stage, if you're doing stage racing. You want to do it month after month and year after year. Again, it takes time. It's grit. It's resilience. And this is what we're talking about. Durability, and I think this is Dr. Seiler's word, if anybody can have a word, that's, that's his. I think it better describes what we're talking about in this regard. And so cycling through training and recovery and training and recovery and then testing and training and recovery, doing that on a long-term basis, that's how you get durable. It takes time, but you'll get it. All right. Now, in the final summary, I'll, I'll say that there's, you know, there's a million ways that you can train. And that's both a blessing and a curse. You can simply start pedaling or running from where you're at right now and call it training. But at some point, if you want intentional change or to hit specific goals, you need to get more specific with the intensity and establish training rhythms in an organized way in order to get to where you want to go. In a very simplistic way, having a well-developed aerobic foundation with properly set training zones, you can then move from low to high end of threshold training, from low to high end of VO2 max training. Make sure that you get in that long ride once a month and you're progressing and not really have to think much more about it. 
I hope that helps. I, I hope it helps wrap up the kind of the series of what you've been hearing from me, what I've been trying to teach you in terms of these basic training concepts. Originally in, in the very first one, I said, you know, what spurred me on to do this was that there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of confusion in terms of how to train right. And I figured since we got a podcast called the Train Right Podcast, uh, we needed to drill down deep into what that means and then give you the tools to go out there and do it. So I hope this, this shapes it up. I'm really curious to hear if people are putting these concepts into play, are trying these workouts, and are organizing their training in a deliberate way. It, it, drop it in on comments, um, you know, on our landing page, or, or you can write in on the Apple podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, go ahead and rate these things too, because it, the better the ratings and the more comments, it, it helps to drive and shape what these episodes look like for you. And as promised, we're going to reach out and see what more of that you want and what maybe you want less of in the upcoming episodes. But for now, I mean, interact with us, let us know what's working, what's not. But I really do hope that you've gotten a lot out of this basic concept series. Thank you again for listening and, and being a part of the Train Right podcast.